Hi, everyone, and welcome to Dr. Z PhD podcast, created by me, Dr. Z. As many of you already know, a clinical psychologist specializing exclusively working with transgender and non-binary adults. You may even be very familiar with me from my Dr. Z PhD YouTube channel. And if not, I highly recommend exploring video content on the channel. It is full of information. And today, as I'm recording this on a really beautiful, clear day here in Los Angeles, I want to talk to you about not being sure if you are trans. Or are you just being afraid to admit it? And if you're watching this or listening to this and you have already acknowledged that you are transgender and you feel this podcast is not going to be relevant, stick around. Because what I will be talking about is something that I see in a lot of my clients regardless of gender identity. And sometimes it is the same theme playing out in other areas of people's lives, including myself. So stick around. You still might learn something from listening to this podcast. Before we start, let me just say, I hope everyone has been doing great. I really appreciate all the positive that I have received since I started this podcast. Really grateful to those who went ahead and rated the podcast. And if you haven't, it would be amazing if you take the time to rate it from whichever platform you happen to listen to it, Spotify, Apple, Amazon, Google or Podbean. So let's dive in and dissect this topic of whether you don't really know what your identity is or are you just being very terrified and scared to admit it. And this goes back to an issue of trust and our inability to trust ourselves. And I think culturally, right now, all of us, not just trans and non-binary folks, but people in general, I think culturally, are going through an epidemic of mistrusting their inner deep knowing. I think part of it has to do with so much information overload and not being able to often discern whether the information we're getting is credible, knowledgeable, and a trustworthy source. I see this challenge of trusting our inner knowing among my friends when it comes to making decisions to leave their jobs. I see this among my siblings when it comes to making decisions how to raise their children. I see this among my colleagues when it comes to making decisions to level up in their career and modify how much they charge for their valuable services. I see this in myself in a lot of areas in my life. And when we all live in the midst of culture where suddenly everybody claims to be an expert, <laughs> myself included, <laughs> although I would argue that I have definitely earned the right to claim and use the word expert or specialist giving 
my 18 years in in gender field alone. But my point is that so many people today who don't have the experience to back their claims of expertise are vocalizing, vocalizing their opinions. In fact, we have people today who are just out there spitting their opinions left and right as if it is the truth, the fact, the last word. And we all have come across those people. And sadly, I got to say, a lot of these people tend to have access to megaphones to spill out a lot of things. So when we live in this culture surrounded by everybody having an opinion and everybody feeling that their opinion is the right one, <laughs> we all end up questioning our beliefs, our inner knowing, our truth. And as a result, we stop trusting ourselves. What's interesting is I have so many clients come to me who are have this trail, and a lot of you who are listening have this trail, have this long, long, long trail, because you're all adults, and especially a lot of my clients are people who are age 30 and up, have this tremendously large trail of history, of having feelings of discomfort with your gender assigned at birth. For some, going all the way back to age four. For some, age seven. Others, age 11, 12. But the trail is almost always there. And sometimes people may not really know what to make of the trail. They've been so conditioned to believe that whatever they have experienced within the trail is irrelevant and insignificant. And should be dismissed. And what's fascinating is that I get all those clients who come to me wondering, questioning, am I really trans? Am I really non-binary? And they feel like they really don't know. When in reality, 90% of adults I see, and I've seen a lot of adults, 90% already know who they are. And what's fascinating is that a lot of you listening to this podcast also know who you are, but you struggle to acknowledge it, to admit it, and to own it. And what's interesting is a lot of people come to me as if it's not that they need to know. And I think a lot of you may feel this way listening to this. But is that it's almost as if you just need somebody else to say out loud, but you already deep down know about yourself. Because if somebody else says what you already know, then it means there's one more person in the room, one more person in this universe who can see and acknowledge that this reality is happening to you. And 
I see this with people, not just in regards to gender. Like I said, this may be happening to you because you want to live your marriage. And you come to a friend or a therapist or a family member, and deep down, you already know you have to live your marriage. It's not working out for you. It's past expiration point. It is stale. And yet you're waiting for that person to confirm what you already know deep within. And we do this with so many other areas in our life. And I think part of why we do that is because we have been so affected by the epidemic of the amount of information out there, information that makes us doubt ourselves and that removes ourselves from the seat, the central seat within ourselves of our own sovereignty and puts whoever it is we're listening to in that position. It's almost as if we're all we're all rulers of our own inner kingdom. So imagine inside of all of us, there's a kingdom. And I have my eyes closed right now as I'm saying this. And I'm picturing myself within my kingdom as a queen sitting on a throne. And imagine every time I listen to somebody else, somebody else's opinions, and I allow them to take over what I feel deep down inside to be true. I take off my crown and I hand it over to them to wear. And by doing that, I'm giving away my power. I'm giving away my eye. I'm giving away my ownership of my own life story. And don't get me wrong. Opinions of other people are important, right? A lot of you tune into my podcast or my YouTube videos or have read my book because you're seeking for advice, guidance, and an opinion, which, as you know, I do not shy away from giving. But there's difference between listening to an opinion and discerning and taking from it what you need to take without giving up that rulership versus completely giving up your crown and taking somebody else's advice as the truth. And I think for a lot of trans and non-binary folks, this is so, so challenging because there's so many voices out there telling you that especially voices who are really close to you, your family, your friends, that there's no way you can be trans. There's no way you can be non-binary. There's no way this could be happening to you. You may even have medical providers telling you this. And it becomes even that much more challenging to maintain your position on your throne. Very challenging. And I think what's going to help all of you to be able to stay in your position of power is to hold on to your inner 
knowing. Because there's nothing like our inner knowing. And a lot of us already know what we need to do. A lot of you, if not most of you listening to this, if you're questioning to your gender identity about deep down as adults, you already know what it is. If you're wondering if you should come out to your partner deep down, you already know the answer. If you're wondering if you should start hormones, deep down, you also have an answer. We all have that, but we dismiss that inner voice because that's what we culturally been also conditioned to do. Because look, if everybody listened to their inner voice, and do you know what we call in our society those who march to their own beating of their heart? We call them rebels. We call them revolutionaries. And that's because they're listening to their inner voice and not allowing anybody, anybody to sway it or persuade it. So our culture doesn't want us to listen to our voice because if it did, we would have a whole bunch of independent thinkers. We would have people who knew and then moved forward, taking actions towards that which they know. So it's very easy to give up your sovereignty. And we give up our sovereignty throughout various, various instances in our lives for you it might be in relationship to gender for me it might be in relationship to my work and it's hard to maintain your inner knowing to hold on to that but it is possible and it all starts with acknowledging that when you tell yourself i'm not really sure pause and listen are you really unsure? Are, are you actually very much in touch with what it is that you need to know, but you're just looking for somebody else to confirm it for you? And you're looking for somebody else to confirm it for you because you no longer trust your inner knowing. This is the very first step is to acknowledge that so many of us no longer trust ourselves. This is the very first step on the route to learning how to start cultivating the trust again. And if you can do that for yourself today, that's a huge step you took. And if tomorrow you can take a next step saying that I trust and this is what I know is true and I'm going to make a small outline of what I can do about this. Maybe you're going to come to realization that you have had an inner knowing all along, deep down within, that you need to drastically change what you do for a living. Then outline, what is it that you want to pursue? What steps need to be taken to get you there? Remember, this is cliche, I know, but every journey truly does stop, starts with a single step. I had a Freudian sleep there, I said stops, but every journey also stops with a single step too. So this is what I encourage all of you to do as I record this today. This is what I plan to do. I plan to listen and trust my inner knowing. And I did that launching this podcast, not knowing how it's going to work out, not being sure if people will be able to 
have clarity in what I'm saying with my accent. <laughs> Not knowing whether the format is going to be different or appealing. But I knew deep down inside, this is what I was ready to pursue. And I went for it. And I so encourage all of you to start cultivating trust within yourself. And please, whatever you do, whatever, never, whatever it is that you decide to do, try the best that you can not to give up your crown and not to give up seat to your throne within your own inner kingdom. Comment if you're listening to this on YouTube, comment below. If you're listening to this somewhere else, reach out, connect with me on Instagram, Dr. ZPHC. Everything I do is Dr. ZPHC, <laughs> including my website, for simplicity's sake. And let me know what are you going to do? Which areas in your life you have stopped trusting yourself? I'd love to hear from you, and I wish you a wonderful day, and I will talk to you all next time. Goodbye.